Two years ago, Callaway introduced two models into the Apex Forge range. It was the Apex Pro, the Apex Standard, and they were very much two different models for two different types of players. One very much at the player's market, the other perhaps for the aspiring player. They looked fantastic, they performed extremely well. But in 2021, they've introduced one more model into that range, it's the DCB, the Deep Cavity Back. And what that means is there's now an Apex Forge for every level of golfer out there right now. Now you could argue that starting a review based on its looks is not the best way to start because, um, well, it's uh, very much subjective and it's also who cares what a club looks like, I suppose. It's all about performance, but I don't necessarily buy into that. I think shelf appeal is massive and for me, I've got to like the look of something even before I start to try it. These three irons are, in my opinion, arguably some of the best irons that are out there right now it's they look absolutely stunning and what i like about it is it doesn't matter which sort of profile you put yourself in in terms of category that you put yourself in they look good as a player's profile that apex pro is stunning they then look into the standard product which is maybe more where i put myself in terms of uh, the category and then you look at the dcb the other thing they've done incredibly well, we'll talk about later, is the idea that you can streamline possibly even all three of these sets into a combo set to make sure that you're optimizing every opportunity that Callaway are giving you with these irons. But that's enough of that. I'm gonna hit some golf balls, but I'm just gonna give you a little bit of detail, tech spec, why they've made these so special in terms of, I think consistency is the key word in all of this. It's an interesting story from Callaway and the tech is really led by computers. It's more of AI design and I think what it's done, it's led to very much individually designed irons. That means you've got different face patterns for not only each of the different models within the Apex range, but you've got different face patterns for every single iron within each of those ranges. You've got different amounts of tungsten placed in each of those irons and the positioning of the tungsten is also different in every one. It's almost like having a bespoke iron design for every single model that they've got in their range and every single iron from a wedge right through to the three iron. Well, what does that mean for an average golfer? Well, I think with Callaway paying such uh, attention to detail in, in the design of each of these irons, it means that we're getting optimal performance out of each club, but you're also getting a high level consistency. And the consistency is about ball speeds, it's about launch angles, and it's also about spin numbers. And that's really, really important, and especially from when you go from these things used to be achieved in a player's iron, but you used to forfeit forgiveness. And down in the sort of game improvement iron, they were the kind of things, spin numbers, consistency of ball speeds were always issues. So for them to be able to stream that, line that throughout these three product ranges is an incredible feat. At least that's what they're saying they've done. But will that ring true when I get out there and eventually test these things? But before we leave the tech spec, what I want you to have a look at is this quick drawing. It's a heat map and it's a comparison between the uh, CF19 model and the CF21. A heat map which shows the decrease in ball speeds when not finding the center of the club face. And if you look at that CF19 comparison to this model, you start to see how these new versions become more forgiving and that sweet spot is getting ever bigger and that's got to be good news so that's it we don't need to know any more in terms of tech spec what we want to know is how these things performed in my hands so uh, let's get back to floor golf yeah it's an interesting tech story and i think tungsten has played a major part in every one of these clubs i think first of all from a looks perspective top line is a big deal and uh, is a very notable difference as you can see between the three it's very easy to identify which is the pro and which is the dcb um, and again depending on where you sit what profile you fit into is what you will choose but i think if i was looking on the shelf i'm drawn immediately to the apex pro it looks absolutely stunning one of the best looking eyes that's out there right now but then reality hits and you've got to think to yourself, and what level do you play at and can I really get the performance out of the pro? 
So then I'm shifting myself perhaps down into that standard category and that idea of mixing the standard in with the DCB is a real interesting combination. But I'm gonna collect data and see if that rings true because I've said before, there can be a preconception that I can't play, which is what is in my hand is the Apex Pro. We've got three seven irons, one from each of the range. I'll see how they perform differently. They're lofted differently. So we expect different yardages, but is there gonna be different spin? Is there gonna be different launch angles? Have a look at all those things and then I'll give you a bit more of an opinion in terms of how I think these things play. But for now, I just love the look of these Apex Pro. And based on that one, we'd be all right, but this is only a seven iron in hand. The Apex standard is very much the middle ground. It kind of, um, it's got a thick enough of top line to inspire confidence in their head. We know it's a massive big deal. You see the Apex Pro, you see the thin top line. Perhaps a little bit of doubt starts to creep in, questioning, are you really good enough to play that iron and do you want to see a bit more mass? And I think that's what, straight away, stepping up into the standard is what you start to see. That again, solid strike. You can tell even from, I've literally gone from the Pro into this. I'm now going to hit the DCB. And quite honestly, you can see the difference in yardage straight away. Comment on the DCB. It definitely goes into that game improvement category in a forged iron, which I think is fantastic. The top line becomes noticeably different, but not in a way, you don't see any of the backside of it. There's no major looking, it's clearly more offset. I don't know the, uh, whether that's technically correct, but it certainly looks that way. But it's not to a degree where it would have me majorly off put, or be majorly off putting. And again, I've hit three solid irons with each of those, three solid seven irons, and he's gonna collect uh, a fair bit of data and like I said I'll give you an assessment of all three but I'll tell you something now before we go much further these are an absolutely belting set of irons I don't care what that stator tells me I can tell you at this point having hit each of these in a number of shots with them they're very very good indeed That's a great feeling iron. I think what I've tried to do there is uh, I've hit uh, one iron after each other just to try and uh, ascertain the difference in sort of sound and feel. And there clearly is one. I mean, these are all uh, the same in terms of a forged head with um, tungsten in its makeup. Uh, but there is definitely a softer feeling from the Apex Pro to the DCB. And I think the standard product that sits in the middle is almost that happy, perfect medium. I think that really does tick a lot of boxes for a lot of golfers, you know, and like I said, it sounds and feels absolutely spot on. So you've got my uh, general feel on this. I'm pretty impressed with what I think they've done. And as I said, irrelevant of, uh, of data, but let's have a look at that. And I'm gonna throw the three averages straight on screen for you now. So don't forget this is seven irons. The important thing to note is they are lofted. Uh, the pro model is 30 degrees, 30.5 on the standard and 33 degrees on the DCB. Um, the numbers and start with uh, at the bottom there you've got the pro which is uh, 6 8 spin 150 carry 18.6 launch 110 ball speed 46 degrees descent angle that to me is a a number that you'd expect from a player's iron that 150 carry seven iron six eight spin was it and that descent angle that is absolutely perfect it's optimum numbers and that ball speed of 110 was very consistent i can tell you that if you then move to the standard product we've got half an inch stronger 154 carry it starts off with six three spin 18 degree launch 112 ball speed 40 60 cent angle again a minor drop off in spin but still that ball is doing nothing but stop at that descent angle and that amount of RPM spin on it. And again, ball speed and distances increases just that little bit and it is almost that half a degree that you'd expect. And then you go into the DCB model. This is stronger by three degrees from the pro model. And you'll see five eight spin, 161 carry, 15.9 launch, 115 ball speed, 44 descent angle. And again, Probably everything you'd expect in terms of data you've seen there, but it's the consistency that's the key element 
that, that I think is important. And even if you go to the DCB model, so we class that definitely as a game improvement style design, it still produced incredibly good numbers. The consistency was fantastic. I literally hit quite a lot of balls with each of these. The difference I mentioned was sound. I think there's a much purer feeling from the Pro compared to that DCB. But again, you're really trying to pick minor errors. I think the biggest thing they've got going for them, and again, I mentioned it earlier, is the ability to blend sets. And I can almost see the, the, uh, the idea of blending right through from Pro into the shorter irons, mid irons to be the standard, and then maybe sticking a four or five iron in the DCB would be the perfect combination. And don't forget, you'll be able to bend these and adjust lofts to make sure that fits absolutely perfectly. In fact, I think that's something, a standard offering from Callaway in that that's how you can buy them with the lofts already adjusted so it all sits very nicely uh, which is a great idea the final thing I'm going to mention a lot of people always ask me about price I never always quote it because it's RRP that we get but it's 1099 is the uh, is the retail price I'm told they're gonna they're gonna be about 150 British pounds per club and I think that puts them for this build of product and what's built in in terms of the technology story it puts them right in the ballpark where they need to be. It's competing exactly where it wants to be with all its major players, but I think what they've done is produced definitely a set, or, or not, not a set, a, um, a model range that is pretty much unparalleled. I think the only range that springs to mind is, again, what Mizuno did with the MP20s, a similar sort of concept in being able to go from that sort of chunkier game improvement right down to a, a player's blade. I suppose they did something similar. But I've got to say hats off to Callaway. It's a fantastic product and a real great set of irons. And from what I've seen, certainly one to beat um, for 21. Uh, but as ever, you know, that's my opinion. Um, looks is a major part of it because i think they look fantastic all again pretty subjective stuff but i think performance wise it's hard to argue with uh, my interest is from you is from comments down below again what you've seen so far what are your thoughts on these callaway irons and uh, are they going to be on your uh, to try list this year right that's me done as ever thanks for watching thanks for sticking around because uh, you're bombarded with this stuff i know at the moment and it's not going to stop by that we've got another one out tomorrow night so um Maybe if you like what you've seen, consider subscribing, hit that like button, and uh, I'll see you all soon.